Now in America, the marketing of freezing one's eggs as an insurance policy for young women is picking up speed. Facebook, Apple, even the US military now offer it as an employee benefit. But just how effective or reliable is the procedure itself? Joining me now from Toronto is Angel Petropanagos, a researcher from Dalhousie University who specialises in bioethics and feminist philosophy. Angel, thanks so much for being with us. For those watching and who may not know, just explain to us how exactly does one freeze eggs? So egg freezing is a process that involves the hormonal stimulation of the ovaries. Now, what that typically requires after the initial assessment is that uh, the woman is given uh, hormones and she takes injections at home uh, for a few weeks leading up to the procedure. And what this does is stimulates the ovaries so they produce extra eggs for that month. After that point, uh, her cycle is monitored, and when she's ready, uh, they go in and do a transvaginal retrieval, which is a minor surgery, um, and then they extract the eggs. Uh, after assessing those eggs in the lab, the ones that are viable, so the ones that look like they're good quality, will be frozen for future use. Now, um, egg freezing, just to note, is typically uh, only available to women who are in their 20s and 30s, usually, because that's really when you get the best quality eggs. But Angel, just how reliable is the procedure itself? Uh, well, when we're talking about success rates, at the end of the day, for each egg that you have extracted, you have about a 45 to 12% chance of pregnancy uh, according to sort of some American data that we have. So it's not great, it's not guaranteed, and uh, you know, it's uh, quite low. It's a very low figure indeed, isn't it? It, it is quite low. Uh, so, you know, it, it's uh, concerning when egg freezing does get promoted or framed as sort of this reproductive insurance, you know, or a solution, because it's really not guaranteed. And each woman's chances of success are going to vary uh, based on her reproductive function, based on her age, uh, at the time at which the eggs are frozen, and and really at you know where she gets the eggs done, what protocol they use, and so forth. So there are a lot of variations that make it really difficult uh, for most individuals to sort of comprehend what you know what their chances are of success. And I think a lot of times um, these success rates are sort of overblown, and we think that our chances are better than they actually are. And some have actually accused it of being a scam where clinics are sort of preying on young women's fears that they will never be mothers. Uh, you know, I think in a lot of cases uh, that can be a fair characterization, right? So one of the things we see is the marketing in the media. It really, you know, uh, there are egg freezing parties that they promote, for example, through fertility clinics have egg freezing parties and, and they invite women, give them cocktails and tell them, you know, that they should freeze their eggs and they, you know, give them a discount sort of thing. But the truth of the matter is, is that egg freezing makes fertility clinics, uh, particularly in North America, a whole lot of money. And a lot of the women who are opting to freeze may never actually use those uh, eggs in the future to try and reproduce. So there's a lot of money to be made and that in itself is concerning. And, and talking about that, it does seem that there's a number of American companies now jumping onto the bandwagon. But uh, should employers actually be encouraging women to delay motherhood? Well, I think when typically when employers do that, it's in their own best interest as a corporation to do so. Right. So they want to typically keep women in the workforce uh, or in the military, if we're thinking about the military uh, funding of egg freezing. And uh, that's not necessarily in the best interest of the individual women. Right. So uh, for companies that do offer it, what makes it less problematic is when they offer it as part of a comprehensive package where there are other things like child care coverage, flexible time. Uh, you see a balance between men and women's uh, sort of abilities to take time off to reproduce and not sort of have work interrupted in a, a serious way. So when it's in a balanced package, it's less concerning than when it's you know presented as sort of the best option for women and women are encouraged to delay uh, and use egg freezing in order to sort of pursue their career. So I think the framing of it matters, the presentation of it matters. Uh, and, you know, perhaps it's not the, you know, um, it's not in women's best interest to be freezing in some cases. So I think we, we should be uh, critical uh, when and why some companies choose to fund egg freezing. Angel, I'm terribly sorry we've run out of time. We're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much.